Thanks for staying with us. To help us with this conversation, we're going to be having uh, a friend of the house. He's a life coach, Mr. Theo Akatsuba. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you and good morning to you and uh, congratulations for the milestones you have chopped. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. All right, we've been discussing alcoholism and um, we honest, we've discussed a bit of the part of the is a disease and also the effects on the family and how to control it. And we also discussed the fact that a lot of men don't seem to always try to help each other. At this end, they just allow, they indulge, you know, their friends in alcoholism. But it's affecting homes, it's affecting families, it's affecting the children. Um, what are your thoughts on how do we begin to address this issue of alcoholism? Well, thank you very much. Uh, this morning is a very important topic. Um, now, the basic, one of the, the easiest uh, uh, what drives men into this alcoholism, apart from the fact that it's a, a habit uh, that was not changed right from um, uh, growing up and uh, mixing up and networking with friends, uh, or lack of self-control, is the fact that depression, economic challenges, uh, feelings uh, that are, are embarrassing feelings can make a man uh, to delve into alcoholism to to show up his confidence or make him forget his sorrows. Um, but alcoholism that doesn't lead to drunkenness is another matter. If you are just somebody who indulge in alcohol, okay. uh, you'll be damaging your health, yeah. which ultimately will reduce your lifespan, and that can be a lot of problem for the family. But those who move into drunk... Oh, has he gone? Right, so he, uh, we have a network of big issues. I think he's still there. Okay, it's frozen, but um, we'll try to link up with him. But we're trying to and, um, the family. So it's a very, very embarrassing situation, no doubt. And uh, it costs financially. It costs confidence. It, it makes the children feel embarrassed. In fact, it's a huge disgrace. And that's why God Almighty said that a drunkard, of course, will not enter His kingdom. And that is to the extent that man must have self-control. But when man begins to feel inadequate, financially in incapable, and he cannot confront life with his uh, sober moment, but he Mr. Tends Katuga, to take alcohol. Would you and say, that, Mr. Katuga, I, yeah. I, I beg to differ just a little bit because there are people who are successful, who are doing well. They actually have no issues in life. I mean, they, they have the basic stuff everybody else deals with, but they just indulge in alcohol and it gets out of control. So it's not like, yeah. It's, it's as a result you, you, of some kind of a depression. It's just um, a habit that they've been able to, they've yeah, not been able to stop. Saying, I, I said it at the beginning that a habit unchecked. Okay. But don't forget, don't say you see someone looking good and then he doesn't have a problem. Some might be dealing with uh, what you call insecurity or lack of, um, uh, we call it um, self-esteem. A man without self-esteem might indulge in alcohol to booster his ego in the midst of his friend. Some people will take alcohol, get a bit drunk in order to do a thing that they won't do ordinarily or they won't be able to address with their sober moment. So alcoholism and drunkenness, uh, there are things that come as a result of many, many factors. But it is a bad thing. It affects the person's health. It affects family health, expenses. In fact, you can be sure that lifespans are reduced. It promotes diseases. So you can see the effect is far reaching. I want to share with you um, a moment that I had. I took a lady, I, I picked a lady up on my way home and we branched onto our streets. I saw a man stagger, stagger in front of our car with the full light on. It was early in the evening. He fell head on into the water with his face on the ground. He fell into the water uncontrollably and the woman shrunk and told me that that, that's her hus that was her husband. Mm. I was shocked. She felt so embarrassed, her husband falling into that, that muddy water, uncontrolled. She came down from the car mm -hmm. and ran to help him. Very that cool. sight have never left me. Very embarrassing, very disgraceful conduct. But to, to wear that, to go through it, you need a lot of therapy. It's a very difficult area. Prayers are needed. Um, deliver, um, uh, uh, counselors, psychology, there are medications. It's something that's very difficult to come out of, but there's possibility that you come out if you're committed.
Okay, so for me, you know what, when we started this conversation, we were wondering if we had places like that here in Nigeria where alcoholics can go and get help. Like, what sort of help do we give people in Nigeria that are going through this? Apart from friends praying for you or your family members trying to hide the embarrassment, there's something we do clinically for people like that here. Well, I, I am sure, you know of because any. if you look at it, there are, if you do a bit more research, there are people here with that knowledge. Other, we are, of course, medical practice do not advertise themselves. And so if you search a bit more, there are solutions. In fact, you can actually assess solution online. Uh, you, I had a friend who um, uh, got solution in, in far away Israel. He, it was a Jew that helped him. He helped him to walk through the process and he was able to redeem himself from that um, abyss of alcoholism and drunkenness. Very difficult, but he succeeded somehow, and he's getting a bit more sober now. And uh, he gets more sober for a longer period than he gets drunk. Interesting. Um, I want to ask you about the spiritual, the spirituality. You know, there's this, there's this conversation that this thing is a spiritual attack. It is, it can be prayed away. You know, like if you go for deliverance, you can deliver someone from the spirit of alcoholism. And do, what do you agree or disagree? There is nothing prayers cannot do. God Almighty is willing and able to help once you identify your faults and come to him. He said in his word that a drunkard will not enter his kingdom. Mm. It means that it's a satanic attack. Even if witches and wizards in your domain, it's a satanic <laughs> attack for a man to fall into drunkenness. And once you do so, you are dis you're already on your way out of God's kingdom. Because of such seriousness, something that can affect the salvation of man, therefore, solution is available spiritually, no doubt. Well, I mean, I was going to also talk about the issue of the men code, where men don't seem to like to talk about this. You know, how do we get men to actually help each other. Talkman said something earlier that many men will not listen to their wives. I mean, I, I hate to make this a man-woman thing, but many women will try to talk to their husbands, they don't listen. But their friends, their male counterparts, who see them taking too much alcohol, never say anything. They rather just carry their um, helpless um, self, take them to their houses and dump them, and then the cycle comes again next Friday evening. You know. So how do we get men to help each other out in this condition? You see, there are various degrees of men. I have seen where men tell you, I can take 12 bottles and I will not move. They do it as a contest. They mm. do it as they are men, uh, men challenging one another. And at the end, the one that gets drunk is the one that failed today. And they take him home gallantly as the one in the wrestling game who could not stand the test of time. Mm -hmm. That is the attitude that I find in most men. They see it as fun. We are, we are challenging one another. I'll take 12. You take 12. Let's see who goes down first. So it is in the process of having their little fun that all these falling feelings come. And when the man gets drunk and he saw that the, the period of his drunkenness, he was he moved into a certain plane. It's like drug abuse, uh, where he, was, he had a certain confidence that he never had. He was able to confront things. He never he said things he couldn't say before. He now wants to go back to it and take it once more. From once more to another time to another time, he get hooked, and all his friends who drank square bottles continue to tell him, you know, we do 12. At... So a wise man will say, I can't do more than two, and that's my gauge. I have a light blood. It's about self-control and wisdom, because without it, a man will always become a beast. Hmm. You know, a lot of young people, when they are growing up, peer pressure, you know, it's like, especially for young boys, this is how you show up. What would you advise, like, as when you're bringing up a child, what sort of principles should you teach a child about, you know, just life that can help that person as they grow up so they don't fall into such pressure? And let me just add a little part. There's something that Mariah was saying that, you know, there are some people that seem to have been shielded from alcohol and they, she feels that they tend to be the ones that go all out when they have an opportunity to finally be able to take alcohol. What are your thoughts on that? Thank you very much. You see, that's why you say that truth, you must teach truth to save. You don't deliberately hide truth in order for you to say that, oh, the person will misinterpret it. Like uh, Moriah said, those who are deprived, once they got the opportunity, those who are the tendency get worse, especially when you go to places where control, a lot of control measures. Now, for children, teach your children the consequence of actions. 
consequence of action, the outcome of their impute, of what they do, when that enters their mind and sit well in their, in, their, in, their, in their heart, whether you are there or not, those words will resonate with them. Because there's no much you can do by simply scaring them away from it. It's by telling them the consequences, giving them stories, experiences of other people, because people learn by experience, not your own experience, but the experience of others. So you must give them example. You must let them see the outcome of drunkenness, the way drunkards behave. You must show them video of what drunkards are. Look at them sleeping in the gutter. Look at the drunkard fell, had an accident. Once they begin to see that, they know that this alcohol causes this. If I take it or anyone who takes it, we must teach the consequences of everything. Anywhere there's no consequence, people are always free to misbehave. Because, yeah. and then don't overly Funny scare that. them. A sip of a drink can tell them, look, look at how it tastes. It's bitter. It's not something you should indulge in. It's, bit, it's health. It has no health benefit. Wisdom tells that don't indulge in it so you don't damage yourself. So you share stories with your children, share experiences with them. That will guide them more than men blocking them from it. So mm. that's the way I think the best way right. to advise our young ones today because they are very well informed. Yeah. The social media is a gog. In fact, life is full of fun in their minds. Mm. Right. And it is in the midst of having fun. I tell you, my first drunkenness in life was as a result of the mix uh, an alcoholic beverage with, coke, uh, with uh, uh, a soft drink. I don't want to mention the name. Mm -hmm. And I, I kept indulging. It was so sweet. And I saw these, these guys drinking with me. They were laughing and smiling. Their <laughs> laughter became accentuated. The ground that I put came up to my chest. I felt the ground was close to my chest. The next thing, I started falling onto the ground. I didn't know that I was dying gradually. Thank you that very much. <laughs> Let me let you go, Mr. Katuba. Thank you so much for always being a, a help for us in this kind of time. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure having you. That was Mr. Thank Phil Akatsugwa. He's a life coach. Um, <laughs> then let's speak with you comments I, on social I, media. I, I that was hilarious. Somebody was drinking. He said, when he stood up, he said, ah, can't you see the pregnant person in the wall? <laughs> that he was seeing the pregnant woman in the <laughs> wall. He was like, like, all of you cannot see. See, a pregnant yeah, I have, woman. I, I've, never, I've never been drunk. I've never, I've never been so drunk. So it's about you know where to stop. Yeah. It's like you feel like, okay, I'm, I, I don't. I'm, I'm when, I, I'm, when, when, when I got tipsy, I mean, mm. back then, when, you get when tipsy I, and then my you get water and stop. Back in the day, <laughs> yes. when I used to. Years drink, ago. <laughs> years ago, at the time I would get to the point where I'm tipsy and I know it's time to stop. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. But many but people don't have that control. Day, so I remember. Mm. <laughs> and and, and this. But was yeah. back in the day. It was back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> on national television. But the truth is that there are different grades. Right. And if you are observant, you will know when you are getting yeah. tipsy yeah. and you should at that point stop drink a lot of water yeah. and don't indulge anymore you know, you know, but if you continue you are going to be the ground will be level in front I of you i shared you guys with this story before also that when i was growing up myself and my sister then we used to love even the we used to love being in air condition with smoking the smokers mm. you know when, when your daddy's friends are coming and they're smoking mm. and there's ac the, the smell the... was just blowing really nice there was this coolness you know but they would chase you away to go 9 p.m. news grid to come in, everybody goes. <laughs> but we used to crave for that that atmosphere. Mm. The moment we enter America like this, ha, air conditioner, friends, you know, so we just, but after a while, you just realize that you, know, just, you, can, you can't, you know. I'm, so as a young person, you feel that pressure, but you must know, okay, you've now finally had it. Yeah. It's time to let go I'm, of it. As a minister, I'm just trying to remember what my influences are, were that helped with my own. And I'm thinking my secondary school, we used to have teachers mm. and elders it was a, a girl from St. Louis doesn't do that. Ah. A girl from St. Louis doesn't indulge in that. So <laughs> as a girl from St. Louis, I had to be above <laughs> these things. So that also helped. You know, right. even our guests, I mean, I just said something yeah, about that, our secondary yeah. school. Yeah. Yeah. Those yeah. sort of things also mm. would help. Fantastic. Let me That's take this call from Sunday. Good morning, Sunday. Thanks for calling. Good, good morning. Good morning. You're always bringing up interesting topics. Uh, Thank you, sir. Because <laughs> down memory I, I grew up with an alcoholic father mm -hmm. back in Lagos. I, I just had to flash back to all those difficult times when you come back to him. It's not that he's not well to do. He has all the resources he needed in the world. But I don't just know. You come back and then you call a meeting. 2 a.m., everybody <laughs> come out. You start addressing issues 
that will lead to beating of some people. <laughs> and, Are you serious? I tell you. you know, the, that alone for me was the lesson I needed for life. If I see people drinking alcohol, I'll actually start for them. I'll just quit. How they know the implication that this and getting addicted to it what we need them into. I think that was for me the okay. saving grace. So I would just encourage people want to see people, want to see the implication. He will drive and get to the gate, lean his head on the steering and be pressing the horn until he will come outside to open the gate for him. Wow. <laughs> Imagine that. So, I just want to share that with us. Thank you very much, Sandy. <laughs> That's an interesting story. You know, we, we all have different stories. Any comments on social yeah, media? We do. Um, someone said, um, everything in moderation is key. Even the Bible said it's moderation. Um, uh, so uh, another person said, there is a rich accountant in my neighborhood growing up. He goes to work in the morning, all dapper, suit, tie, well-dressed. Mm -hmm. He comes back in the evening, drunk, drunk and strips himself naked. <laughs> and that for him was a lesson not to... Oh, no, talk about... Go ahead. Adagio actually says, I'm a mixologist. I love to contribute. I would love to contribute that alcoholic consumption in the body is good. The consumption must be moderate and not to become intoxicated. Red wine consumption in human body help to help to help effective function of our liver and kidney. Well, I would say that's your opinion because recently I also learned that no matter how tiny the alcohol is, yeah. it affects you negatively in your body. So that's also yeah. an opinion. That's why I would never listen to all this your research. Because <laughs> one day, you eat this, don't eat that. I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to eat what I want to eat. You alcohol know, is poison. You every don't need it. New data let keeps coming up. You keep telling us all sort of things. But <laughs> oh, good please, okay. let me take Festus from Kate. So good morning, Festus. Thanks for calling. Good morning. You're live. Good morning, everybody. Go ahead, please. You're live. <laughs> you know, that thing at times is spiritually in you. <laughs> at times it is spiritually in you. Okay. So it is also curable spiritually. Mm. The Bible says, create a new, a new heart. It's a matter of changing the, the, you know, the brain spiritually. So, you know, then people drinking alcohol or whatever, we just, you know, be receptive to that person. Hmm. Yes. All right. Thank you very much, I'm, Festus. I'm curious about that spiritually induced. Is it that someone is just lying down, doing something, and then something in their head just goes, go no. and have a drink? Sandra, and then you go and have uh, a drink. Mariam, you so have not watched walks. enough oh, old videos. Yeah. <laughs> when you watch your own videos, they will carry somebody's picture to the Babalawo shrine. The they, will now, they will now say that they should send something to this person. The person will be sleeping. Something just come like this, through shiny light, and it not comes. But you wake up, see, and from that point, not you start to trivialize it, but permanently. Not to trivialize it, because <laughs> this, this, show, this show is supposed to educate Nigerians. Yeah. As much as I try to balance conversations to see different perspectives, mm -hmm. and that's why I bring up the angle of the spiritual, because I know there are Nigerians who, who feel have that way. <laughs> but the reality, it's a disease that can be cured. Mm -hmm. Let us not totally blind ourselves and make it look as if it's totally spiritual. Mm -hmm. This is a disease. So alcoholism, as much as we would love to blame the spiritual, I know spiritual could possibly be, but because if we put too much weight on the spiritual, we now totally depend on prayers to do this. And when people, some people pray about it and nothing happens, and it's because yeah. you ca it can be clinically detected and cured. We have here. So as much as we appreciate the spiritual angle, let us not forget the importance of actually curing this disease, which is chronic disease that can be cured. I, I, I'll definitely um, say that um, for any woman, um, any family, because some, it might be a woman who is right. married, a wife married into that situation with children, or it might be parents dealing with their child who is already um, a drunkard, I would say, please, you yourself need to go into therapy. You need to get a psychologist, psychiatrist, a coach to help you understand how best to manage the person who is um, the, the, the alcoholic and also then now subject the alcoholic um, person into therapy session because we, it's not something you can just feel like I can be strong and deal with it. You need help to be able to help someone else. There's something we forgot. I think it was NDLA. I can't remember which agency that was advising that before you give up your give your daughters into marriage or your sons into marriage, do a drug test. It must do drug test. I think some governors have mentioned alcoholic yeah. 
test, you know, you need to make sure because you don't want to get married to someone and then you okay, find that you're yeah. dealing with much more than regular marital problems. You're now dealing with addiction. Yeah. <laughs> you need to know before that this is what I'm about to deal with. Yeah. And if you're hanging out with people, you see this guy you like, he's constantly drinking, it's not cool. I promise you, it does not age well. That mm -hmm. drunken Doesn't. young boy that is feeling cool, yeah. it becomes a burden in future. Right. So for young girls, young boys too, that girl that like, that's a baddie. She holds her drink. When she becomes a wife, you will not like it. So yeah. please, let's yeah, be absolutely. mindful of and that. If you, and, and if you're in school, you drink. I mean, listen, there's casual drinking, but you must know when to stop. Know your body. Mm. There's anything I know how to do well is know me. I am very, very crystal clear on who I am and what I can do, what, how far I can go. So you must know, because I, I, we can't pretend that there are no young people there drinking. There are people drinking. But please know where your limit is and stop it. Control yourself. And if you can even stop it completely, the better for you. You know, many of us have stopped drinking. We, you know, we, we can have the, we can, we can reference those stories now because we've been able to go past that stage. So please, if you're young out there, know your limits and try to, as much as possible to stop it. And don't, before you get into a mar marriage, please make sure your spouse is well checked and you are sure you're not marrying an alcoholic. And mm. if you are marrying an alcoholic, be ready to help Having them the through cross. that journey. Mm. Be ready. It's a disease that can be cured. Let's not totally completely blame the spiritual. Mm. This can be a cured disease. That's all we can take on today's show. Have a great day. We'll see you on Monday. Yay. We need this weekend.